Hello, it's me, your Christmas fantasy. <laughs> Hello, strangers and friends. My name is Grace, and welcome to vlog two of Sometimes I Make Things, a podcast primarily about knitting, but we include all sorts of making things here. Like I said, this is episode two, so if you have seen the first one and are coming back to watch this one, Hello again, and if this is the first episode that you have come across on your internet adventures, hello for the first time. Happy to have you here. Hope you enjoy your stay. As episode two, I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for the warm response on episode one. I had a lot of fun making it, and I learned a lot making it. It was the first long form editing that I had ever done. Like, I've made a couple reels and TikToks, but never a full length video like that before. Um, I learned a lot about the editing software I'm using, which is iMovie. I felt really proud of it, and then just to get really nice comments and a positive response from it really made my week. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to keep that going, but I'm also being very relaxed about when I am making videos and when I'll be releasing them, because again, this is something I am doing for fun. Um, so I don't know if I'm ever going to have a strict, like, two-week schedule or Thursdays or the days that I post, etc. Um, but you know what? I'm going to try to be regular about it. It's something I want to keep working on through 2022. So, thank you. This week I'm aiming to do something a bit more like a puzzle episode is what I want to call it. So it's not just going to be a sitting talking head, but including a few things that have happened in the past two weeks since I filmed my last video. Um, since starting the YouTube channel, I've been more aware of what I'm doing and what I want to share. So rather than just taking a photo of something, I've been taking short video clips because I think those are more engaging to watch than a static photo. So I have a few different things thrown in um, for variety and that also adds a bit more of an editing challenge, which again, something that I'm trying to work on with making these videos. So today I obviously have an FO to share, more on this later. Um, I'm also going to be talking about some of the things that I made and gave for Christmas. I am filming this before Christmas, but I'm planning on posting it afterwards. So everyone will have gotten their gifts already and I will am free to share with the public. And I have one work in progress to share. I am planning on keeping it to one work in progress until Christmas Day. Christmas Day is going to be my new cast on day. Um, and I also have some treats that I want to share because holiday is a food time, if any there is a food time. All times are food times, but anyway, um, some extra special food stuffs that were done and that we made and enjoyed over the holidays, as well as a fun little holiday adventure that I went on with my parents that our town put on as a charity event. So I think there's some fun things to stay tuned for, and I hope you enjoy what I have to share. First off, let's talk about the green elephant in the room. I finished my diaphanous raglan and I'm very proud of it. <laughs> um, this sweater, I started it in the very beginning of August and I wanted it to be done for winter solstice, December 21st, which I pulled off. I blocked it on December 21st and then on the 22nd we had our family brunch. So I got to be in my woolen glory for brunch, which was fantastic. Um, I talked about this in the last episode a bit about what makes the design special and what I love about it, but just a quick review. Um, we got a v-neck on the front and the back with these gorgeous puff sleeves, which I did block using balloons, uh, much to my father's chagrin. <laughs> Love the sleeves, big fan of the sleeves. Um, it is a long crop, I would say. It doesn't fully go past my waist um, or fully cover my belly, I should say, but it also, I wouldn't really call it a crop top, so it's a mid-length, if that's an appropriate term. I did a split hem on this design, which I will be showing off here, and Overall, just it's very comfortable. I think it's very beautiful. I got a lot of compliments on it at brunch from my family, because again, small brunch, COVID times. Yeah. Um, the sun is moving, so we have slightly adjusted position. 
Anyway, <laughs> the yarn that I used for this is Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. This color is Forest Heather. I used three skeins of it for the body as well as the wrist hem. So I was surprised. I thought I would need more. I have one untouched skein left. So if you have any recommendations for um, Stroll, maybe I'll make a pair of socks. But if you have any recommendations, please let me know. And I have a skein and maybe a quarter of this mystery mohair left. Again, this was from Romney Wools in Toronto. Uh, very happy that I have a full skein left to do whatever I want with it. More on this later. She will return. Overall, if you are thinking about making the diaphanous raglan, highly recommend it. I believe I will be making more in the future. However, I do have some plans already in the works for 2022. So I don't know if I'm going to get to it in 2022, but I'm very happy to have this pattern in my library going forward and can't recommend it enough. Very positive experience. The diaphanous raglan is something that I knit for myself, but I also did do some gift knitting for the holiday season. And probably the thing that I am most proud of is that I knit stockings. Um, this is going to be a stocking for my mom. I knit one for my dad in dark green. Both of these are knit from uh, Let Lopi or Alifos Lopi yarn. So it's a bulky weight. I knit it on a five millimeter, so it's quite a dense fabric that it made. Um, I made these from scratch. I couldn't find a stocking pattern that was precisely what I wanted, so I made my own, and I'm super excited about that. Um, let me tell you a little bit about it, I guess. So it is a toe-up construction and knit in the round. I did a short row heel here, which is the first time I've done a short row heel. Pretty interesting. We have increases because we want maximum volume for our gift giving. And then this is actually a fold over cuff, um, if you can see there. So it's extra squishy. And then the bind off that I did kind of gave a natural braided effect, which I then tacked down with the tail. So I feel like it's very tidy, it's very neat, it wasn't difficult to make. I think um, the two that I made, both of them, you could easily do in two days or a day of knitting if you're a really quick knitter. So um, I like the idea of maybe trying to release this as a pattern. I've never done a pattern design before, but I feel like this is a very uh, approachable stocking or sock design because again you can do it on a much bulkier uh, yarn so could be an interesting place to start with learning some sock construction but anyway um, very proud of it and I am calling these classic Christmas stockings that's kind of the working title that I have for it um, my dad's I'm not going to show just because I already have it fully loaded and I don't want to worry about damaging anything in it I thought of this in the summertime and then I knit these in November and my sister and I worked together to get items to put into the stocking. So as far as gifts go, I'm really proud of this. Uh, stockings are one of my absolute favorite things to open on Christmas day, just cause I think it's that crow mentality of I just like things. So being able to open a lot of small presents is very exciting for me. So I wanted to return that favor to mom and dad. Uh, mom always does such a fantastic job with my sister and my stocking each year. It's something I remember very warmly from my childhood. So I really liked the idea of returning the favor and doing one for them. And we can continue to use these in future Christmases Christmasy <laughs> to um, use as a gift. So I'm pretty excited about the stocking pattern. I think it's a great thing to do as a knitter or even a crocheter to make stockings for people that you care about. So that is my next year's Christmas recommendation to you. If you are wondering about gifts, probably not. But anyway, the last finished objects that I want to show off are also gift knits and they're very cute. This is Leafometry. It's by Leigh Guthrie and they're cup cozies. So I made two. One will be for my mom, one's for my sister. I believe this will be the one for my mom and this one for my sister. But they both really enjoy a good cup of Tim Hortons coffee or tea um, or they use travel mugs and I just thought that was very fitting for their love of hot drinks to give them a little hot drink accessory. So as far as color work goes, these were quite simple. There weren't any excessively long floats in them. And I think it was a very engaging design to do. I think if you did this on a worsted weight, you could easily make it into a cowl if fingering weight color work is intimidating to you. 
But otherwise, as far as color work in the round goes, I would recommend these to a beginner in color work. Um, it's fun, it's not too hard, and it's a pretty cute project in the end that makes a good gift for yourself or for others. Um, so again, that was Leafometry by Leigh Guthrie, and those were two quick little easy knits that I also did for the holiday season. As I mentioned in the beginning, I currently have one whip that I am maintaining until Christmas Day, and that is the Classic Ribbed Beanie by Pearl Soho. This is a gift knit for my sister. It's not a surprise. She mentioned that she hated her hat and my knitter ear caught that and said, oh, would you like a new hat? Um, so we went on Ravelry together. I showed her a couple designs. I was interested in knitting. She picked out this one and she gave me a color vibe that she wanted. And I went to a local yarn store and picked up this yarn and I have been knitting it since. What a beautiful story. <laughs> anyway, here is a close-up look at it. I posted this recently on my Instagram if you want to check that out there. But again, it's just a classic one-by-one -one ribbed beanie. I'm about halfway through my current skein. I'm hoping to just do this in one skein, but I think I'm going to have to pick up a second one. Um, I'm okay with that, though, because this yarn is beautiful and I want to have more of it in my stash. This is Drop Sky. It's primarily an alpaca yarn. There's a little bit of wool in there and polyamide. Um, I don't know if you can see it in there, but it is a chain based yarn. So it has a nice texture to it when you're knitting it. It's incredibly soft. It feels like it's going to be a nice warm but also light um, knitted object. So I'm pretty happy about that. This color is called Hazelnut. I love everything about it. I think this is an exceptionally perfect color. I'm hoping in the future to make a sweater out of it. this yarn. They have a black colorway that I think is really appealing and I want to make a black sweater at some point. So I think this might be the yarn that I go for. It's around $10, $11 Canadian per skein. It's a 50 gram skein. It's around 230 yards in um, each ball. So I feel like it's a pretty solid option for a beautiful alpaca yarn. Mandatory whip mentions. I, again, am using silicone beads as my stitch stoppers. These are also from Karen Co. for all your stitch stopper needs. And this is the Elm Leaf, and I am blanking on the name. I think this colorway is Sage, but they're just adorable. We got a very cute woodsy theme here, which you know I love. And the project bag that I'm using is one I actually got from a Knit Picks order that I did in the summer. And it says wool enemy number one on it and has a wool moth on it. Iconic. As I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog, I am planning on doing a Christmas Day cast on. And is it a niche Turk? Like I mentioned in my last episode, no. A niche Turk has been pushed back. <laughs> in favor of completing a goal of mine that I actually had in 2020, didn't get to it, and now again 2021, haven't gotten to it yet, we're running out of time, and that is brioche knitting. Uh, brioche, it looks so beautiful and the texture sounds so appealing, it's something I really want to learn how to do, girls gotta get on it. So the pattern that I found was a free headband pattern, it's a beginner friendly brioche knit by Fiber Tails who you may know from the Fiber Tales podcast or Fiber Tales on Instagram. She is a Danish designer. This pattern is called Dreyu. Um, Dreyu is a island in Finland. And this is the yarn I'm planning on using. So, leftover from Diaphanous. This is Lichen and Lace 80-20 sock. Um, I got this as a gift from Mega of Skeins and Dreams. One of the many reasons I love her. She gives great presents. <laughs> Um, and I think these two together will be a beautiful combination. I've seen some folks on Instagram do a light yarn and a dark mohair together and it just glows. So I am excited about that. I love a good green. Uh, I'm going to be holding the fingering weight double and then this single with it. So I think that'll give a really nice plush juicy fabric. So that's going to be my Christmas day cast on is learn brioche, make a cute headband, and then have that for the rest of the winter. And then I will get to Anishtark at last. Um, updates on Anishtark. I was looking at it a lot. Anishtark is a drop design, which means it's basically a rectangle that you knit straight down. And that means that the sleeve droops over your shoulder like this. And for someone like myself, 
who has a large bust, that can lead to some buckling and folding around the armpit area, which isn't always the most pleasant aesthetically or comfort wise. So I've been thinking a lot about it, like, hmm, maybe I'd like to do raglan decreases along the shoulder edge, very similar to what this is doing here, because that just brings the fabric in and prevents bagging happening. Over now, there is another pattern on Ravelry, which is an all-over cable pattern, which does have those raglan decreases, which is Peyton's Honeycomb Erin pattern. Now, I prefer the cable design on Anishturk more than Honeycomb, that's why I was opting for Anishturk over Honeycomb, but taking a closer look at Honeycomb, I think that's more so the style I want, that raglan decreases, just because I think it'll fit my body a little bit more comfortably and have a better aesthetic. So. I'm going to combine the patterns. <laughs> um, I haven't taken a serious look at this yet, but my main plan is to look at the charting for honeycomb, see how those decreases are done, see what the sizing is like, and then lay over the cable patterns into that from Inishtur. So it's going to involve a little fiddling around, but that's what we do in knitting. We fiddle. <laughs> Uh, so more on that in the future, I think I'm going to be doing some drawing out and maybe a little bit of math to check in on that. Uh, Honeycomb Erin, if you're interested, is a size inclusive pattern. It does have up to a 62 inch bust included in it. Um, so that's another option if you are interested, like me, in an all over cable pattern. So more on a niche Turk in the future, but things are developing, which is exciting. It's always exciting. <laughs> as far as things go on the knitting front, that's pretty much everything I had to cover. I am planning in my next video, episode three or vlog three, still figuring out the nomenclature of my own podcast. Um, I'm hoping to do a 2022 goals or a general stash overview, talk about what kind of yarns I'm interested in and what I'm interested in making with said yarn, and just a general, this is what I'm hoping to achieve in 2022 video. So probably planning on having that out in early January as far as my next knitting content goes. Like I mentioned though, there are things that I have made and worked on that are not knitting over this holiday time. Um, baking being a very fun one in my opinion. So something that I made recently are these butter tart squares. I actually got the recipe from Egg Farmers of Ontario, which is getcracking.ca. Uh, the recipe was very simple, it was very delicious, it was a hit with my family, it was a hit with me, and this is something that I'm definitely going to add into my personal recipe repertoire when it comes to bringing a nice dessert or making something easy for say like a cookie exchange or you just really want some really good comforting food. Um, butter tarts I think are a Canadian thing primarily. I'm not sure if they're popular elsewhere but they can be a little complicated to make because they're like little sugar pies basically and this format, you just lay down your base, you put on the beautiful dressing, and you cook the base first, then you um, bake the caramel layer on top, and you let it cool for a little bit, and it's fantastic. So good. Please make it. I will include the recipe below, and if you make it, please let me know, because, like, let's just get a cult of butter tart squares going, because this is delicious. That was the sweet front. On the savory front, I made bruschetta for the first time, which was a lot of fun. It's a bit labor intensive because you gotta chop everything perfectly. You gotta make sure your tomatoes are properly drained and getting your mix-ins right. I don't think it was 100% the best. It's probably not a nice way of putting it. I'd say it was like a seven out of 10, whereas like I aim for a nine or a 10 if I'm cooking for myself. Um, it was a hit with my family as well. My dad loves bruschetta, so that was great. I sliced up betard bread and toasted that with olive oil, and I also cut up brie and had crabapple jelly, which is from my area, and just made this cute little charcuterie cheese board kind of vibe. Um, I was expecting to have company over, and that's why I got all these things ready, but life happens, and they had to cancel, which is totally fine. We will reschedule, but I had this food. And I was not going to cancel eating good food on myself. Never. So I ended up just making it for myself and my family. And I'm really glad I did because I think being able to assemble a good platter is an excellent hosting thing. And being a good host is like my ultimate goal in life. I just want to have people over. I want to feed them. And I want to give them a good time. So... You know, I'm leveling myself up every day. <laughs> um, after we had our delicious cheese board, 
we went out and did a Christmas light show that my community put on. It's all done for charity. It was, I'm not sure how long of a route it was, but I think we were there for a good 20, 30 minutes in the drive through A lot of cars went through, but you know, you're in your own little bubble and it's warm and cozy and you just get to watch the lights go by. It was really pleasant. And at the very end, we did a donation and that money is gonna go to local charities in the area. I believe it's the Optimist Club that put it on. But it was just delightful and we were laughing and having a good time and playing some Christmas music over the radio. So I think it's gonna become a family tradition to go and check out this light show because it was just super charming. To close things out, I would just like to wish everyone a happy and safe end to 2021. Whether you are celebrating holidays or if your holidays have already happened, I am wishing all the best for you. Uh, end of December can be a hard time for some folks. Maybe you're thinking about what happened in the past year, people that you're missing, or sometimes there's difficult things with family that happen. Or it's a really happy time of year where you're with the people that you love most. And whichever it is, just I want you to know that you are important, you matter, and I hope that 2022 treats you right because you deserve all the best. I hope to see you again here soon. If you are interested in checking out what I'm up to in the meantime, I am Zumo Crafty on Instagram and Grace Teresa on Ravelry. And if you want to subscribe or leave a comment here, I will get back to you as soon as possible. And cheers until then. Bye, friends.